June 2019, Atacama Desert, Chile. It's winter. The cold night reached minus 20 degrees C. We're about 4,300 meters above sea level, and we sure thought that the El Tatia Gazers were the last remarkable event of that day. The thing about Atacama is that the sites themselves are not the main attraction, rather it's the journey that gets your attention. The landscape just changes so fast, from snowy fields to rough rocky terrain in all just a few hours of driving. Along the way, wildlife just pops out from both sides. There are like herds of vicuña and guanacos, and we're lucky enough to see a raya. Atacama's lesser rayas are actually highly threatened, and only hundreds are left in the wild. Vicuñas are everywhere. By 1960s, they went nearly extinct due to overhunting. They were, after all, the source of the world's finest and most expensive wool. These days, vicuña wool can only be shorn from a wild vicuña every three years, thus boosting the rarity and price further up. So it wasn't a clear, straight road where we spotted an animal in the dead center of the road. That was strange because most animals would just head off they don't really want to be seen by people. So we stopped, parked the car, turned off the engine, and took out our long lenses to get a better view. Apparently it was a culpeo, and Dan Fox, like Lopex culpeos. This fox was slowly edging towards us with a tentative but quite submissive pose. I found this odd as all other culpeos we've encountered in the southern part of Atacama, near Piedras Rojas, were wary of people and would immediately scamper off at just any sign of a car slowing down. This one just steadily crept toward us and eventually found his way under our car. I figured that since the early morning temperature was around minus 10 degrees, it wanted to get some warmth from our engine. So we decided to take out our biscuits and have some coffee and let the fox get warmed up under. About 20 minutes later, we decided that it was time to go and we couldn't figure out if the fox was still under the car. So I stepped out to check and just about three steps off, the fox jumped into the car. It quickly grabbed a biscuit that I left in my seat and then went back for the whole pack. A few seconds, I closed the door and we got back in the car. It was then when I realized that I was outsmarted. This sly fox is used to tourists and had developed a modus operandi of staying just outside the view of the passengers, waiting for someone to step out of the car. It then grabs some snacks that are almost always lying somewhere in the compartment. The least we could do that time was to wait for it to finish eating and to grab the trash that it left. On hindsight, we made a lot of errors in judgment with dealing with wildlife this time. But lesson learned and one happy fox.